take a look at this beautiful new image from the Euclid Space Telescope. All over, there are stunning objects to look at, and we'll get into all of it. But the focus of this image is the large galaxy in the center. It turns out this is a pretty special galaxy, thanks to something that we've just discovered in the center. If you zoom into the center, we can see an almost perfect Einstein ring. This galaxy is gravitationally lensing a distant galaxy, and this is a truly special situation. The mission of the Euclid Space Telescope is to survey over one third of the sky. However, even before this mission properly began, the telescope started making amazing discoveries. This one happened in September 2023, during the early phase of testing for the newly launched Space Telescope. As part of the calibration tests for the instruments on board Euclid, the telescope was taking some images that were deliberately out of focus. Something you should know though, is that Euclid is an awesome telescope. 1.2 meters of the best mirror one can buy. And even in these fuzzy images, one of the scientists named Bruno Altieri saw a hint of something special which called for a closer look. Bruno was looking at Euclid test data as it came down to Earth from the telescope. And in one of those images, he could make out an Einstein ring. As Euclid took more and more images of the area, it got clearer and clearer. The big galaxy in the image is a reasonably nearby galaxy called NGC 6505. It's 590 million light years away, which in a vacuum is a long way, but as distances between galaxies go, it's relatively small. We've known about this galaxy for a long time, since 1884, but we've never seen the amazing secret it had in its core until we had the power of Euclid. Now that we know the ring is there, if we actually go back to older images, we can see hints of the ring. For example, in this image from Hyper Supreme Cam, an eight meter Japanese telescope. The ring was never noticed though, it must have slipped through any detection algorithms run on the image, and no human saw it either. What's pretty cool is that I've been told that this image from HSC is approximately as blurry as the out of focus Euclid image that Bruno spotted this new lens in, so that shows us what an impressive spot this was. We also have this old image, in which the ring isn't really visible. This one was also taken from the ground by Desi, however we can extract some hints of it. If we make a model of what we'd expect this galaxy to look like if it was a typical galaxy, and then subtract that from the actual image taken, we're left with what we call the residuals. Here, we can start to see hints of the bright spots that are visible around the Einstein ring of the new Euclid image. So that's pretty cool. The Einstein ring surrounds just the core of NGC 6505, not the entire galaxy. That ring is made up of light from an incredibly distant galaxy that's about 4.42 billion light years away and perfectly aligned behind NGC 6505 from our perspective on Earth. The light of that distant galaxy is then being distorted by the NGC galaxy, warping its path and distorting it into a ring. The distant galaxy won't really be a ring, it will just be some regular old elliptical or spiral galaxy. But thanks to the distortions of space-time, we're seeing it look very odd and very beautiful. Einstein rings themselves are very rare things to find, and they're an example of what we call strong gravitational lensing. In less perfect cases, this can produce multiple images of the same galaxy in an image. Sometimes in a cross shape we call an Einstein cross, or sometimes even fewer repetitions can be seen. JWST is another space telescope that's amazing at spotting strongly lensed objects, but now Euclid is in the conversation too. This new lens is special for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it doesn't encircle the whole galaxy like we might expect, just the core. That's an added layer of rarity, and is a result of the galaxy doing the lensing being so close to us. Often, strongly lensed objects are seen around clusters of galaxies, or much more distant single galaxies which always means they're a lot further away from us. So it's cool to see this one so close. The size of Einstein rings like this is more or less a constant on the sky, no matter how far away the galaxy being lensed is. What changes is the size that the galaxy acting as the lens looks. Since this one is relatively close, it looks big to us, and the ring ends up inside it. If the lensing galaxy were a lot further away, it would look a lot smaller to us, and the ring may surround the entire galaxy in that case. Secondly, this is the first time we've ever found a strong lens in or around an NGC galaxy. NGC stands for the New General Catalogue of Nebulae and Clusters of Stars. 
It's a list of 7,840 objects, including galaxies, star clusters, and nebulae. They are, in general, quite well-studied objects, but we've never seen a strong lens in ones before, despite even imaging this galaxy before with other telescopes. The thing is, this galaxy is bright enough to have been discovered and imaged a while ago, but it's not so bright that it's super easy to study. And it's also quite far north, so it's not even a particularly convenient location to image for many astronomers. If you're going to study a medium brightness galaxy for some reason, you might as well study one near the equator, where most of the world-leading telescopes are. This means that this particular galaxy isn't too well studied, and explains why over 6,000 objects were found in the NGC before this one. Because of this, the faraway galaxy here that forms the ring has never been seen before, and it doesn't yet have a name. If you can think of a good name for it, please suggest it in the comments. I don't have any insider information on this, but I would hope that if it does get named, that it's named after Bruno, the guy that discovered it. Bruno's galaxy does have a nice ring to it, pun entirely intended, and there is a precedent for this naming scheme after a JWST scientist already named a galaxy after his daughter Maisie. Beyond being beautiful, Einstein rings like this are very scientifically useful and can help us study the mysterious components of the universe that we don't yet understand well at all, namely dark matter and dark energy. We expect the Euclid mission, after it's completed, to find approximately 100,000 strong lenses in the next six years or so, which is amazing because right now we only know of less than a thousand of them in total, and even fewer of them have been imaged in high resolution. Finding one like this so early in the mission is very exciting, and it gives us lots of hope that Euclid will discover many amazing objects as it scans the sky, mapping out billions of galaxies out to 10 billion light years away, and creating the largest 3D map of the universe ever. The first small release of Euclid data will be called Q1, and it will happen in March 2025, so we don't have to wait long to hopefully see many more strong lenses. This is a field of study that is about to absolutely explode, thanks to powerful new telescopes like Euclid. Specifically though, reading the paper that's released alongside the image, science has already been done with this one lens. While other lenses have been used to study dark energy and test Einstein's general theory of relativity, the results so far from this new lens have had more to say about dark matter. The properties of the ring allow us to measure the mass inside the ring very accurately. So that's all of the stuff that the ring encircles. By also counting photons, we get a great estimate for the number of stars inside the ring and in the galaxy as a whole. And then combining all of this with how the stars in the galaxy are moving allows us to get the so-called mass to light ratio. This in turn tells us that about 11% of the mass in the center comes from dark matter and also tells us there's more low mass dim stars in this galaxy than we would expect based on the number of similar stars in the Milky Way. So we're already learning a lot thanks to this ring. With all of that said, let's take a closer look at the whole image. We actually got two versions of the image, one in the science paper that was released detailing this discovery, and another one that was publicly released in the press release from the European Space Agency. They show exactly the same thing, but they've been processed a little bit differently. You can see this pretty easily, because the colours of many of the objects are noticeably different. For example, in this smaller galaxy off to the side. This is a result of Euclid observing both visible light and near-infrared light, which we can't see, so it has to be mapped onto visible colours for us to enjoy these images. And exactly how we do that is a bit of a choice that we have. As well as this, the two images do use different filters to make those images, also giving us a difference of colour. The version in the paper, processed by Tian Li, uses visible light plus two infrared bands that we call Y and J for the background galaxy. And then the main galaxy in the center takes its color from three near-infrared bands, Y, J, and H, but it uses the resolution from the visible light imager, which is better than that of the infrared camera on Euclid. The press release image uses visible light, Y and J everywhere. And for example, this makes the central galaxy look more purple than the version in the paper. For most of us, it doesn't make too much difference here, but you can pick a favorite and stick with that one. I prefer the one in the paper over the other one, which is why that's the one I've mostly been showing you. Of course though, that's just my opinion. Feel free to agree or disagree in the comments, but let me know why if you do. The zoomed in image here of just the ring uses only visible light data, it doesn't use any infrared data. 
This is because of the fact that the visible light imager is higher resolution, so it gives us a clearer view of the ring. Do be sure to notice all the stunning background objects that sneak into the image too, and their wonderful shapes and colours. Let me know any particularly cool things you find if you zoom in by yourself, and shoot me any questions you have about this whole thing down below too. I'll do my best to answer them, and I know some of the authors of the paper, so I can always ask for backup if there's anything I can't answer on my own. Thanks a lot for watching, and please consider subscribing if you're new to really help me out. I would really appreciate it. Until next time, stay safety. I'll see you soon. Bye!